Good morning. Welcome to worship today. What a great turnout we have for this very special day of worship. Thanking everyone who makes this worship possible with uh, their help today and with all of the preparations. I uh, now would ask that you prepare, we all prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our gathering music. Today in worship, we are welcoming new members into our community uh, and uh, also welcoming Jackie McMaster into our community through the sacrament of holy baptism. If you were to look over in this corner over here, uh, you will see, some of you will see that there is a truck. And on the truck, it says, God's work, our hands, our truck, your food. And uh, we are so grateful for your generosity. The truck was filled yesterday morning with your gifts. And if you have brought food today, um, you are encouraged to bring it to the truck. Uh, and um, it goes to people in our own community through the Hanover area. Council of Churches. And again, we thank you for your generosity. A week from today, Vacation Bible School begins. And we have a really special kind of experience for you uh, with the restrictions placed upon us because of the pandemic. Uh, Jan, in her creativity was able to create an experience that keeps families distance from each other but still interacting through vacation bible school we still have some room some tables for families um, or for grandparents and children um, please take the time to register early this week so that we can be prepared for you. And take note that our youth are continuing to meet through the summer, thanking Tim Peck and uh, his wife, Chris, as well, who 
are um, spending time with these kids outside and also through Zoom. There are many other important announcements and I encourage you to read them. Uh, we continue to have this worship service through the summer and uh, we are in the works planning for fall uh, and we'll be offering other kinds of worship opportunities as well at, in the midst of where we find ourselves today. We continue our worship as we sing opening hymn. Good morning, everyone. We are gathered here today to give thanks to God as we celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism for Jackie Jean McMaster. And even though Jackie is getting baptized later than we do typically in the Lutheran Church, this is an affirmation on God's part to all of us that God is making a proclamation today that God is indeed in love with Jackie always has been but this is the moment where he proclaims it to all of us and so we celebrate this day for jackie as she hears god's redeeming and love redeeming and forgiving love for her this day god who is rich in mercy and love gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of holy baptism by water and the word god delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Jackie, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to be baptized into Christ? If so, say, I do. People of God, do you promise to support Jackie and pray for her in her new life in Christ? We if do. I ask you, Jackie, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God. Do you, and I ask you, the people of God, to join together as we confess our faith. Do you believe 
in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Pour out your Holy Spirit, this power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And before we do the baptism, I pour water into the font, reminding us that it is simple, everyday, ordinary water. But with this simple, ordinary, everyday element and the word of God and the promise of God, God brings us to new life. Jackie, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Jackie Jean, I baptize you in the name of the Son. Jackie Jean McMaster, I baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. And so, dear Lord, we pray that you would sustain Jackie with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forevermore. Amen. Jackie G. McMaster, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ, now and always. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. And today we're reminded that Jesus' light shines even though we're not able to keep the candle lit. <laughs> Jesus' light will shine. And uh, we, Jesus, um, we want you to have this candle and to light it and to be reminded of Christ's light in your life and the light that you are to us as a community and to the world. Mm -hmm. I invite all who are gathered today to welcome Jackie into the body of Christ. You will see um, words printed um, and we, I ask you to join me in saying them. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us as we celebrate God's love and serve in Jesus' name. And let us welcome Jackie as you honk your horn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel for today is in the 13th chapter of the book of St. Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind, even when it was full, they drew it ashore, set down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous, and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The gospel of our Lord. Well, before I begin my sermon this morning, I must confess, and I'm just going to say right here to Jane, Jane, will you please print out the gospel in larger print for me next time? I'm having difficulty seeing it. And it's not my sunglasses. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Have you ever thought what the kingdom of heaven must be like? Some imagine streets of gold. Others imagine pearly gates and everyone floating around on a cloud. Many think of it as a mansion, as Jesus talks about it in John, with many rooms. Some think about it as a place where there is no more suffering and pain. I've had all of these thoughts about the kingdom and many, many more. But in addition, I like to think of the kingdom of heaven being a place where you can eat all you want and never gain a pound. In fact, I'd rather have that any day over the streets of gold. I don't know if you were paying attention to this gospel reading this morning, and it's complex and I think hard to understand, even though the disciples answered yes to Jesus' question. But in this gospel, we have lots of different images 
of the kingdom of heaven. We were reminded of its similarity to a mustard seed, to the yeast that leavens bread, to a hidden treasure, to fine pearls, and to a net cast into the sea which brings about fish of every kind. Perhaps it would do us well to spend some time this afternoon and throughout the week pondering these various images of the kingdom of heaven and what they might mean for all of us. And so, in the interest of keeping my sermon at a reasonable length, I'm going to focus on just one of these images and you can thank me later. One thing you may or may not know about me is that I love to cook, thus my image of heaven. Cleaning up afterwards, not so much, but I love to cook. My grandfather taught me how to cook breakfast when I was about in first or second grade, and my grandmother a cake. From there, with my love for food, I have enjoyed trying my hand at all kinds of dishes, including making bread. Perhaps it is the reward of eating a freshly made loaf of bread while it is still warm that makes the effort and the time it takes to make it so very worthwhile. One time, many years ago, I was making some potato bread and I got distracted from finishing the job. This was when our boys, who were all within a year and a half of each other, uh, were very young kids. And so you can only imagine my distraction. Anyway, I covered the dough and set it aside only to come back late that night. I had forgotten about it, but surprisingly, I found the dough had risen. And not only had it risen, it was beautiful. It was perfect. As you can imagine, I was very pleasantly surprised. Even though I had been baking bread for many years at this point, I knew that yeast could be temperamental. With liquid either too hot or too cold, there could be a disaster very easily. I had made bread, particularly in the early years, that had been overwhelmingly doughy and heavier than a brick. But somehow, call it a miracle, with no special treatment or care whatsoever, that dough rose to perfection. And I recall it being one of the best loaves of bread I ever made. It was delicious. In our gospel for today, Jesus offers us a brief comparison in this parable. He says the gospel, I mean the, the kingdom of heaven, is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in all, with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. In a very simplistic and one might even say very ordinary way, Jesus is reminding us all through this imagery of the yeast, of the power of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus uses words and imagery, imagery that you and I can relate to, to paint a picture 
for us of what brings hope into our lives and into a world so desperately in need of it. You know, every day we turn on the TV, don't we? And we are overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by the news of this pandemic. I can't get away from it no matter where I turn. It haunts me, it deprives me. Oftentimes it leaves me in despair, not knowing when or if it will ever end. And if that's not enough, there are the stories on the news and the pain that it incurs from racism and the destruction that it brings to so many people's lives. We are a divided country with everyone seeming to hate somebody, someone certainly who is different from them or looks differently from them. There doesn't seem to be much civility anymore in the world. And this is true not only in relation to race, but to our politics. And even and especially in religion. So the gospel today, the good news for you and for me is that the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. It's like yeast in that it can and does work even when we get out of the way, even when we leave it alone, even when we least expect it, even when everything is working against it. For if it could happen in my loaf of bread so long ago, Jesus would say, it can happen anywhere. That hope beats despair, that love conquers hate, and life prevails over death. Even here, even now, even in the mess we find ourselves, and like an ordinary yeast which makes our bread rise, perhaps it can even happen in and through ordinary people like you and me. Yeast can be a powerful thing. It changes the constitution of dough into a wonderful thing of heavenly smells and delectable delights. And so can you and I. We can be a powerful thing. As we live our lives of faith as ordinary people doing simple and ordinary things like bringing food to the food drive. We can be a powerful thing by trusting in the grace of God and the promise of God's Holy Spirit within us to transform this world, or at least our particular corner of it, simply by showing love and forgiveness and kindness and hope to all to everyone that God puts in our path. It's as simple as that. May it be so for each of us. Amen.
Okay, thank you, Leah, so much. And Scott, too, what a gift. We now welcome members, new members, into the body of Christ and specifically into the congregation of St. Matthew Lutheran Church. And I will ask our new members to come forward. As they do, I will say their names and also say who their sponsors are. We are not asking the sponsors to come forward um, uh, just to make enough space for them. And um, I think, should we have them stand back here in the shade? I know that not everyone will be able to see you, but when I call your name, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand uh, and um, so those around us can see who you are. We have Mike, Michael and Becky Collins and their son, Benjamin. And their sponsors are Josh and Jamie Patterson and their family. We have Karen Flickinger and her sponsor is Ray and Nancy Miller. And we have Jane Lawrence and her sponsors are Joan Belt and Scott Fredericks. Jackie McMaster and her sponsor is Linda Wheeler. Kathy McMaster and her sponsor is Linda Sanders. And Walt and Judy Porowski and their sponsors are Randy and Deb Klein. I should add to Pastor David and I have had a great experience with these folks. They uh, took new member classes uh, through Zoom. And uh, so it's really nice to see your whole body <laughs> and not see your face in a little box. And uh, you know, even through Zoom, we were able to really make some great connections with one another and with Christ. Dear friends, is it your wish to make this community of faith, St. Matthew Lutheran Church, your church family, and the people with whom you will share your journey of faith, is this the place, and are these the people with whom you will seek to make sense of the issues of your life, your dreams, your faith, who you are and what you are to do, who God calls you to be? Is it your wish to make this place where you continue your journey into greater health and wholeness? Where you listen to the story of God's salvation and the good news of Jesus Christ, allowing Jesus to be an example and teacher to you, where you are called to a life of ministry and justice, and where you are fed at the table of new life. Yes, by the grace of God. Will you commit yourselves to seek and serve Christ in union with this community of faith? We will. We God. Will you pledge your spiritual, social, and financial support to this congregational family? And I ask you, the members of this faith community, to respond uh, with the words that are in bold. Will you, who are members of this faith community, who witness these promises, share the joys and sorrows, and do all in your power to support these brothers and sisters in their life in Christ? We will, and we ask God to help and guide us. Will you welcome these new brothers and sisters, embrace their gifts, their needs, and their dreams? Will you recognize that their presence and participation will change the shape of this body and help it grow in new ways? Will you support them in their journeys and assist them in their lives? Got to go. Let us pray. Loving God, send your Holy Spirit to be among us, knitting us to one another. Help us grow with each other, to love each other, to support each other, that by your common life in this community of faith, we may come to know and serve you and all our sisters and brothers. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. As pastor of this congregational family and speaking for the entire congregation, on behalf of Pastor David, we welcome each of you as active members in the body of St. Matthew Lutheran Church. May the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. And let us show our welcome by honking our horns. Let us pray. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things. A mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help us as your church to witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Lord, in your mercy. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers who are working on a vaccine for COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy. Your spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to those who have lost loved ones, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick, especially those on our prayer list, our homebound, and all those we name before you now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. You show steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help this congregation ask boldly for what is most needed. We give thanks for our new members. Refresh us with hopes and new dreams of being your people in this place and time. Lord, in your mercy. In you, our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by the inspiring witness of your people in all times and places. Embolden our witness now and one day gather us with all your saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, in the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And we invite you to share the peace with one another. People in your car, you can wave to one another and honk your horns. And now we continue as we share together this meal that the Lord has instituted for us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to thee. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has prepared this feast. Receive this bread and wine with hope and joy. Amen.
the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, you have greeted us in our brokenness and nourished us with the body of Christ broken for us. Risen to new life with you, send us now to bear your healing power into the wounded world. In the name of our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. People of God, go in peace. Remember that Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.